Hey, what's poppin', man? You already know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J. Hill, yes, man. Sir. Conversation series. Uh, we, you know what we do. We, we sit down, talk to good people, have good conversations, man. With, without further ado, my guy, Chef GGM in the appreciate building. You, appreciate what's you. Appreciate What's poppin', dog? Man, give me some love. No, man, it's cool. How you feeling, man? man? Good, good, chillin'. It's chillin'. good to see you, man. Um, Thank you, same to you, same to you. Oh, before we get started. Oh. I appreciate you, Come man. bearing man. gifts, From my, my guy. Yeah, you know, shout out to Bella and Rose, you know, a little something, something to take it with you, you know, do your thing with it, you Appreciate know. it, dog. Yeah, no problem. I'm gonna sit this one up here, you know, just got mine just for a little, yeah. Already. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, um, Chef GGM, first of all, let's start with the name, um, but... Let's start with it like this. Tell the people who you are, what do you do? Um, so I'm Chef DGM, Baltimore, Maryland, born and raised. Um, grew up up Park Heights area. Um, moved over northeast. Um, I've been a chef for about maybe 10, 12 years. Stopped being a chef a little too hard for me. Um, had like heart problems, disability, stuff like that. So um, I just went into the music. And that's what I've been doing ever since, just Damn. working on the music and shit. So when you said it was hard for you because you had heart problems. Yeah, so basically uh, my mother and my father, they both got like heart failure and like a whole bunch of issues, you know, just hereditary shit, you mm -hmm. know, how I should be. But um, yeah, I got this shit a lot sooner. I was a chef at the Sagamore Pendry for like a year and a half. I was a chef at Oreo Park for about five years and then a chef at um, Baltimore Convention Center for about I was the sous chef like two years down there. But um, at the, the Sagamore, I had worked overnight for real. So me working overnight, I was no AM cook, and I went to the night cook, me working overnight. It was just, I was around a lot of fumes and stuff, and I had walked in pneumonia, and he realized this shit for mm -hmm. real. So when I went to the doctor, the hospital, they saw that my heart was like, it wasn't pumping how it should be, basically. So it was not pumping as strong as it should be. So I got a pacemaker put in and everything for real, for real. So. I've been dealing with that, but it's been a blessing in disguise for real. I got three little girls, so I spend more time with them, more time with my son. But other than that, it's, it's been, you know, crazy ride, but fun, fun to say the least. God bless, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, so sure. what, because when, at first when you said uh, it was chef, being a chef was too hard for you. Right, right. But then I'm like, you turned into a rapper. I'm like, right. I thought, I would think like that's harder than being harder, a chef. Harder. I mean, what I mean like being hard, I don't even mean like hard in the aspect of like I couldn't do it or nothing like that. It just, it was. It was a lot of stress, and mm -hmm. for some reason, my heart, because it's not working, it just couldn't take it. So right. I, had to, I was in the hospital for like a good two, three weeks Damn. and stuff like that. But like I pulled through, um, just trying to do better, you know, eat better, stuff like that. And yeah, Yo, with, really with that heart that. condition, man, um, how has Corona been treating you? Um, like it's crazy. Like I don't do a lot of, you know, with everything being shut down, I ain't really been doing much anyway. But mm -hmm. now it's like I'm just waiting for things to open back up and see how things go. But it's not too, too bad. You know, I just you know, follow little rules and guidelines, stuff like that. They tell you to do, just try not to do too much for right. keep it, keep it simple. I feel like you got like two type of people in, in this pandemic, right? You got the people that don't really take it serious, and then you got the people <laughs> that are taking it OD serious. Right, which, right. which one are you? Um, I'm kind of bored. I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm not going to lie about it. Like I got a lot of people like my moms and my grandparents and stuff. They're a little elderly. So they like, oh, you got to go get the vaccine. You got to go get the vaccine. But then it's like, I'm kind of on the fence because I done heard a lot of stuff, just like everybody's heard a lot of stuff. And with the whole Johnson & Johnson stuff that just came up about it not, you know, working and stuff like that, I'm just like, I'd rather, me personally, I'd rather not take it. But, you know, I mean, I don't know the way things are going. It's kind of hard to tell for real, for real. But I haven't gotten the vaccine. I'm going to just put that mm. out there. Yeah, I haven't got. Now it makes sense. Yeah. So, bro, <laughs> uh, you, was, you was a chef, man. What made you choose rap? Like, what um, made you go from being a chef to, like, I want to rap? So, I have uh, uh, another... Homeboy of mine that I rap with named Yo Geechee, shout out to Geech. Um, he actually, we were just at one of his ex's houses one time, just started rapping, and then ever since then, like we put a song down called Rello in the Fingertips. Remember this song to this day, like that's my favorite song. Like we never put it out or anything, we just made it. But we've made other songs after that though that we've put out and stuff like that. But he just um he just always just freestyle with each other, stuff like that, just doing a little, you know, things here and there. And we just one day was like, yo, he got a microphone, he said, let's put some shit down, see what happens, and that's what we did. And, you know, he's still on it. He does other things like real estate and stuff like that, you know, sells, you know, houses and stuff like that. So he's on that venture, but he does still rap. But that's kind of how I got into it. And then my cousin, he brought me into it too, because he's been in the game for a little minute. And then like, he just kind of, he was in VA for a second, came back and now he's back here. So he's kind of like, you know, showing me the rope, showing me little things, you know, giving me little tips here and there, you know, shout out to Fresh Paint, you know, I fucked with you because. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much. How long, how long ago was that when you um, made that decision to be a, a musician? Um, well, officially, I I dropped my first project, which was Who Would Have Thought last year, around the same time in April. I've been rapping before that, officially or unofficially. Um, 
I want to say maybe six or seven years for real. Okay. But I just never really put anything out. I never really like you know went and signed up and you know got official and did all the you know paperwork and all that whatnot. So yeah, that's what's pretty much. So you made that official transition from being a chef to an artist. Do you think you kind of it was kind of unfair or you you felt like you left something behind because you was kind of forced to stop being a chef? Right. Yeah. Well. Um. So because I was like I said I was already doing music. A lot of people that I worked with like Myron, shout out to Myron. Um. The other cooks that I work with, I played my music for them in the kitchen. So they, a lot mm -hmm. of people heard my stuff before. It was like, yo, you got a thing. You need to just keep going, you know, keep working on it, keep doing your thing. And then with the whole, you know, me not being able to cook like I wanted to anymore, I felt like that was kind of like a blessing in disguise in a way to say the least because it was kind of like a, it gave me that time I needed to not be cooking and to kind of mm -hmm. like focus on the music. So it took my t like, I love cooking, but it's like, you know, it's both both fields, don't get me wrong, a lot of work in it and stuff like that. You really got to stay with it and stuff like that if you want to cook and some shit. But it's like, you know, if you got a passion, like I got a passion for cooking and I got a passion for rapping. I can rap tomorrow, cook tomorrow. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's up for me, you know, it's whatever. But it's like, yeah, I just, it wasn't like I was losing anything. It was more so like I was, because I still cook at home for my kids and you know, okay. for my others and stuff like that. So it's just, I don't do it professional. I'm not like, oh, you got to get this out by this time. Or I'm not like down niggas' throats like, oh, you need to be in here. I'm not, that's not my responsibility right. anymore. So it's like that side of it, like the responsibility side, I ain't really had to worry about too much. I, I, I asked that question because, you know, um, of course, your, your artist name is still Chef GGM. Right. Right. So I'm like. Part of part of it is like, man, are you still are you doing that because you can't let the chef go, right? Or is that just where you see yourself at? Just still, I'm still a chef even though I'm not cooking. Well, like I said, a lot of people know me as chef because of me being in the kitchen. I was a sous chef for years. So that became so, your name. Yeah, it's like it literally just became my okay. name. So everybody's like chef, chef. When people see me, it's either chef, C, or you know whatever, whoa, whatever you you know whatever they want to call me. Whatever. Right. And then the GGM actually stands for God got me, and I got that tag on this um. And that, like I said, it stands for God got me. That's just, I'm not real spiritual in the church, but I do believe it's like high bands and stuff like that. I do believe like, you know, you do how, you know, work your way up and, you know, get your blessings and stuff like that and really stay focused on what you're doing. But it's like, I'm not big on like, you know, going to, you know, Baptist churches or Catholic churches. I am Catholic, not to say, you know, the least, but it's just like, that wasn't, that wasn't me. So I kind of stick by the GGM motto because it's like, that's kind of what I, what I grew up on for real, for real. Right. So, yeah. But even with that, right, like your name is Chef, but but then you say you got you got a single brunch on Sundays, right? Right. So like now we still in kind of like the this cooking business, yeah. the food business, right? It's like when I as an outsider, it's like oh he can't let it go, right? For you, what's the motivation behind it? That? Literally just happened like that. Like it was literally like how things just fall into place. It was one of them things where it's, like I literally came up with brunch on Sundays, just sitting at home, you know, talking to my significant other. She was telling me about her day or whatever, and like we went and laid down and. I just was listening to beats and the beat just was there and I'm like, damn, the actual beat was named Sunday. Mm. So then I came up with the brunch on Sunday. I'm okay. like, okay, bet. So it's like it just kinda and it was funny because a lot of people say that like, are you gonna stick with the chef, you know, the imagery and stuff like that? Like which way are you going, how are you gonna do it? But it's just it's something that stuck with me. It's not like I didn't really choose like You ain't force it. Yeah, it's not I can enforce it's like everybody knows that's what they know me as. So it's right. like it's not something that was like, yeah, let's go with chef because yeah, it's just something everybody if you if you know me personally, you know like Chauncey can cook. Like if my real name is Sean, but you know, Chauncey can cook or whatever like that. So yeah. It's it's crazy because um one thing that I've noticed about you off Bucks is like like, um, you say you just started taking it seriously a year ago, but you're very, like, you ain't scared to put up for yourself, right? Can't be. Like, I, um, I see the visuals with Brunch on Sunday yeah. shot by Maggie, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think Stars had something to do yeah, with it. Yeah, he helped directing, yeah, 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 right? Helped right? So it's like, yeah, I yeah, definitely yeah. see, like, you, you into it. Yeah, you definitely. Want to invest in yourself. You got, you got, like, like I said, um, I paid for everything in that video. Like, the video, probably all together, I probably maybe spent, like, 2500 That was mm -hmm. renting the venue. Like, the whole venue was mine. Got the whole venue, um, got the car that we pulled up, man. Like from from start to finish, that was all me. Bottles, everything you saw in that video was all me. So it's like, yeah, you had to take, you gotta, you're not gonna get nothing back without putting something into it. Mm. So it's like, and a lot of a lot of people had told me that, and it's like, you, people don't understand it, but it's like, it's very simple. Like you just gotta. That's like, why would you go invest in somebody else and not invest in yourself? Mm -hmm. that's a and that's and, and that's a question for not. Uh, 
it don't have to be literally, literally it can be literally and figuratively, yeah, right? Yeah. So like when you say invest in somebody else, that's going to work. Right. If you're going to work doing a nine to five, that's investing in somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of people don't understand that, man. No, for a fact, because they think they because they getting that check that they invest in themselves, like you have no idea. And it's honestly <laughs> like you doing yourself a disservice because it's like you can you got so much potential and grinding you that if you really just got to it, mm -hmm. it would just come out. But it's like people so worried about oh well, this person. I don't me personally, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Like. You can have your opinion because at the end of the day, if you're not helping me or put money in my pockets, you know, whatever, like, what else can you say? Like, your opinion is your opinion. I can't get mad at your opinion. Right. And that's like the day's world. A lot of people get mad at people's opinions and shit. Like, it's like a lot of people just soft. It's like, I can't be mad at you for your opinion, but that's not going to stop my grind for real. Right. <laughs> what, what are some of the um, things you're working on next, man? Um, so I'm trying to um, drop a EP, like a little summertime EP. I don't want to drop it too soon because I kind of want to get a bunch of time. I meant brunch on Sundays, time Sometimes, to, you know, yeah. yeah, really get up. But I have a lot of music already done. Like I said, I got the EP done. I'm just trying to, you know, I got a few songs. I think it'll be like nice little singles and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm gonna call it EP for starters. I know that's like another. Another little, you can't another, let this. Yeah, you can't let the chef thing go, man. I feel like I gotta I gotta really go through the cycle mm. in order to really complete it. And then once I complete it, then I can move on to the. So next. you think you, you you need some type of closure in a way. Mm, no, not not necessarily. I feel like some people that I've talked to is like, yo, you should run with the chef idea. I think you could. Because there's not a lot of people that's doing right. the chef shit. So it's like, you got. I kind of got my own little lane. I'm not in nobody else's lane. So it's like, I don't really got to like, be too much to worry about too much. I can, I can kind of do whatever I want for real. And that's yo, the feeling. I hear you keep speaking about like the people around you, right? Well, like you said, um, you was letting the chefs, the other chefs listen yeah. to your music. They liked it. The people around you saying, yo, you should uh, run with the chef right. thing. How do you think that, like, outside of your direct peers, right? Mm -hmm. How do you think people are taking to you as you become this artist? Um, I think a lot of people have seen my growth. Mm -hmm. I think they've seen, especially if you like, you know, if you've looked me up on SoundCloud or you were following me in the past and stuff like that, you can see the transition from then to now. Um, I gotten a lot more comfortable. Um, and just overall, just better with like just tone and just taking my time with different little things. And that's why I feel like a lot of people around me are still like so supportive and still mm -hmm. like, Yo, you got it. Just go ahead and do it because it's like when you see somebody, it's not the, it's not necessarily the talent that you see. It's the potential and the drive that that person has mm. that makes you like, yo, I fucks with that. Like, let me, let me, okay, I see what you're doing. People give up on that, on that passion and just be like, the people be like, why you don't support me? Because it's like, what am I supporting? You, know, Facts. you ain't doing you. Like, <laughs> you gave up. <laughs> what what right, you want like, me to do? So, I can't like, support you if you don't support right, you. you don't support yourself. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. So it's kind of like that. Yeah. A little joint for real, but yeah. Nah, man, I definitely appreciate uh, you reaching out to me wanting to do the interview. Definitely, I appreciate definitely. the interview. The energy is good. For this to be your first in yeah. interview, <laughs> you do better at speaking than a lot of artists, artists, period. You know thank what I'm saying? You, so, like, um, I definitely want to support you. Keep supporting you, thank dog. Um, you definitely been working. You work on this EP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You working on so much more music. I'm, I'm assuming you working on features and things like that. Yes, Wait, definitely. question. Are you... Is there anybody in the city or outside of the city that you want to work with that you probably haven't got a chance to work with yet? Um, I'm looking to work with, I met Moose a couple times. Everybody, you know, work with Moose and stuff like that. But um, outside of the city, I can't really think of any, like I, I'm open to work with anybody, especially if they got, you know, good work ethic and stuff like that. I'm not, you know, turning down anybody. But um, my, my ideal person to work with, I'm really trying to work with Russ. I'm trying to work with, you gonna make him sound to eat too? Huh? I mean, <laughs> he got the wing stop. You know, we, we might we might work something out. And I like his hustle spirit. That's kind of why I fuck with the Bel Air so much because he actually had a competition where though you know he wanted to see the hustle on you. So mm. I kind of put a lot of the Bel Air shit in my video. Smart. So that's why. They got to get his attention for Thank real, you. For real. So that's why I kind of do. That's why you gonna see a lot of little Bel Air shit around here and there. You feel me? But, but I see. Yeah. I see the. Uh, I see that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the first name you said was Moose, right? Out of the city. Right. Why, why was you want to? Why, um, why was that the first name you said? So I literally run into Moose everywhere, mm -hmm. and I, it's, I, I see like I don't see like you know no you know I see Moose literally. It's just like random. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes I, I'm I'm the type of person who is like I feel like things kind of just line up for a reason, and it's like for me to just keep running into him. It's like I feel like niggas supposed to do something special or something mm -hmm. like that, and I've always like paid attention to moves. I've always, you know, seen moves moving and stuff. And I fucks with moves music. Like, don't get me wrong, not like that. But it's just like, I just feel like he got that yeah. something, something that he just, we, yeah. we could work together and just do some shit. I'm yeah. pretty sure if you DM him the, the, the ticket, be like, yo, I got this for you here. Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, pretty sure he'll be, yeah, right? be on that shit. But, but nah, right. man, you, you got the EP coming out. You're working on a lot of things. Uh, hopefully you can get the moves feature. Hopefully you can get the Rick, Rick Ross uh, deal yeah. and feature. Yeah, but um, how, but we got brunch on Sundays that we, that, that's what we, 
pushing right now. Right. But how can Sundays. people support that? How can they listen to it? So um, Brunch on Sundays is on YouTube. It's on all streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify. Um, you know, definitely check out the video on YouTube. The video on YouTube Tough. is crazy. Oh, it's crazy. It's, it's out to Maggie, it's out to Stars. It's oh. a, yeah, Matt, shout out to Maggie and Stars for sure. They did their thing. Like, they they, uh, they definitely, it's, it's a great video. Mm. It's definitely a great So video. how can people, outside of the video, of course, how can people support you and follow you? What's your um, I'm on uh, Chef GGM on everything. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snap, whatever social media. I'm on Tumblr. I'm on uh, Clubhouse, even though I'm not really on that like that. But, um... And a few other things. I'm pretty sure if you just type in Chef GGM, it'll just come up on everything. So just follow me and I, I, I fuck with you. I'll see what's up. Yo, again, see man, I appreciate up. the conversation, Thank man. You, my God. I love Thank the intellect. I, I, I think we was able to get in and yes. get exactly what we were talking about. Yes, and I appreciate yes, yes. that, man. For, I for appreciate real. you, my guy. You already know, man, Mr. J Hill, Conversation Series. I don't got no more to say. Good conversation with even better people, man. It's a wrap. We out. Let's get it.